Well, how insane is this? Do you notice anything different here compared to the previous tests? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. A unique and powerful Raptor test of Starship has recently been published by SpaceX. The Raptor test was tested in the longest long-duration burn ever. Lasting over two minutes in the test, the engine burned vigorously and continuously during this process, creating a brilliant stream of exhaust resembling a giant glowing sword. Definitely distinctive. Not only that, in this test, the Raptor was openly tilted up by 15 degrees relative to the plane. Most of the previous Raptor tests were conducted on a horizontal test stand to minimize the complexity of ground equipment due to the engine's power, and the height of the horizontal test stand also simplified post-test setup for engineers and facilitated data and fuel retrieval. This also enabled SpaceX to rapidly repeat numerous tests, saving costs for the production of dozens of Raptors each month. So, why was there a change in the tilt angle in this test? First, we need to understand the significance of the number 15 degrees to answer that question. When the Raptor can shift by an angle of 15 degrees relative to the plane, it refers to a rotational motion, and the Raptor is able to rotate like this thanks to its gimbals. By adjusting the angle of the nozzle, the engine thrust can become off-center, creating a torque that influences the rocket's direction. In the context of the Raptor engine developed by SpaceX, the gimbal system enables Thrust Vector Control, or TVC. Controlling the thrust vector involves altering the direction of engine thrust to steer the rocket. It guides the rocket through various stages of flight, such as ascent, orbital insertion, and landing. The Raptor engine has been mentioned to have a potential rotation of up to 15 degrees, or we can understand that 15 degrees is the maximum pivot point of the Raptor. For comparison, most engines fall within the range of 3 to 8 degrees. For instance, the Saturn V's F1 had 5 degrees TVC. The RS-25 engines used on the Space Launch System, or SLS, and the Space Shuttle had a very high TVC at 12.5 degrees, though the newer ones are only certified up to 6 degrees. Hence, having 5 degrees is pretty impressive. It's quite useful for the Starship as both stages need to return to certain points. The 15-degree gimbal aligns electrically with a limit of three engines before the engines ignite during the landing to flip the ship from horizontal to vertical as quickly as possible. This maximizes efficiency and minimizes lateral drift from the target. This potentially reduces propellant costs during the landing. The testing of this 15-degree tilt has provided insights into SpaceX's plan for the gimbaled engines on Starship. It's likely that some Raptor engines will need to execute such significant pivots. This is an important factor, as the angle of the rocket engine places stress on several components while generating hundreds of thousands of pounds of thrust. It's hard to imagine all that force passing through a relatively small gimbal mount at such a steep angle. SpaceX hasn't yet told us whether the test was successful or not. However, from the completed video segment, we've not observed any noticeable anomalies. Particularly, the structural integrity of the gimbal mechanism remained intact while subjected to maximum thrust during the testing process. Consequently, a test such as this one has provided some assurance to engineers that these components perform as expected. In fact, many have speculated that this is a test of the engines intended to support the Starship during the ascent phase. This isn't an entirely unfounded assumption, considering that SpaceX hasn't disclosed much on this matter but we can still consider this possibility. According to the known design of the Starship, the separation between the Super Heavy Booster and the upper stage of the Starship is covered by a fairing, which serves to protect the booster's fuel tanks from potential damage by the force of the Raptor engines during separation. Although there's a hot gas structure to vent rocket exhaust into the atmosphere, this structure will be relatively close to the engine nozzles. As a result, the sea level engines might need to be directed outward at an appropriate angle. This could potentially be a test of the gimbal system to confirm its ability to sustain prolonged use. Additionally, there are opinions that SpaceX could be testing the Raptor 3 engine and transitioning from hydraulic to electric gimbals. As these components are integrated and concerns exist about the torque being applied at the engine mounting point, 
This test could be used to measure the level of stress to design appropriate supports to facilitate the maximum range of gimbal motion. After numerous rocket enthusiasts engaged in discussions about the predictions surrounding the Raptor test video, Elon Musk, the head of SpaceX, provided a succinct response on the X platform. Landing burn max gimbal deflection, addressing all these inquiries. This response has shed light on a crucial facet of the experiment showcasing SpaceX's unwavering commitment to fine-tuning the performance of their revolutionary Raptor engine. Indeed, the Raptor engine is inherently complex, and SpaceX will need to conduct more frequent testing in the future as they explore new methodologies. Considerably more powerful than the Merlin engines, which power the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, the Raptor currently dominates the global rocket engine landscape. The latest iteration being developed and produced by SpaceX, the Raptor 3, is capable of generating a chamber pressure of 350 bar, equivalent to a thrust of 590,000 pounds. This engine might have entered mass production since the test producing this thrust back in May. This may not be the fixed upper limit of the Raptor 3 engine. About two months after the test, Musk returned to X and shared that increasing the thrust of the Raptor engine by 20% at sea level is possible. Compared to the 510,000 pounds of thrust of the Raptor 2 engine, the calculated potential of the Raptor 3 engine is capable of delivering a staggering thrust of over 600,000 pounds. Truly an astounding figure. Who can foresee how much further this engine will develop in the future? Alongside the ongoing testing and development of new Raptor engines, those engines that have successfully surpassed SpaceX's evaluations are being diligently transported to the production site at Starbase for installation onto Ship 28. Take a moment and just look at the Raptor. Truly, it stands as a paragon of beauty. To be honest, it's quite pristine, radiating the elegance of a complex and ingeniously crafted scientific feat. Ship 28 is now more than ready beyond the realm of testing. Meanwhile, Booster 10's found its place in the Mega Bay, awaiting the installment of its 33 Raptor 2 engines. This booster's also undergone cryogenic testing. These recent developments have ushered in a tantalizing possibility on the horizon. The prospect that Starship 28 and Booster 10 could be swiftly united, poised for a flight a mere one to two months after the spectacular debut of Booster 9 and Ship 25. This scenario is entirely within the realm of possibility, largely due to the breakneck pace set by SpaceX. The real challenge lies in the preparation of SpaceX's web-based infrastructure, as it remains to be seen whether it can pivot swiftly within such a condensed time frame. Nevertheless, SpaceX is vigorously exploring various avenues to optimize its processes before ignition, laying the groundwork for this potential acceleration. And then there's the crucial matter of the FAA's nod, a significant hurdle that SpaceX has to address for their forthcoming significant launches. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.